go ahead to fiddle around a little bit with a couple of things, but I think we're good to go now. Hello, I'm Sally Snyder from the Library Commission, and we are, I'd like to welcome you to Encompass Live. We have this every Wednesday, or almost every Wednesday, at 10 o'clock Central Time, because that's what works for us. If 10 o'clock doesn't work for you, you can get a recording later that um, you can view and still enjoy whatever it is you wanted to learn. So that's great. I do want to mention that you are welcome to make comments and put them in the, the chat session section um, or ask questions. And also you could raise your hand and ask to have you un yourself unmuted so that you also can ask the questions live and with the presenters. I do want to caution you that every, this is re being recorded already, so everything you say will be on the internet forever and ever, as we all know. So just thought I'd let you know that before we get going. I do want to, um, let's see, there we are. I need to make our presenters, our today presenters in the system, so I'm going to do that. And at that point, we should see their camera and we should see whatever it is they want to show us as long, along with giving their presentation. So I'm going to click Make Presenter. And um, it should be in just a second, they should be able to, to make us. There we are. And I will mute myself and turn everything over to our presenters from Iowa. Yay, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, hi, I am Kelly Forkenbrock, the Public Services Librarian for North Liberty Library. And I am Jenny Garner, and I'm the Library Director here at the Library. And we are ready to present to you uh, policies of yes. I do want to let you know that our third musketeer, Emily um, Tabor, is not with us today. She's our family services librarian and she had a program, an outreach program, so she was unable to attend. So we're going to try to fill her very talented shoes and do her role as well as ours. So it might, this is the first time we've done that, so we'll see how it goes. If it gets a little bit clunky, that's why, oh, you can only see half of me. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm just snuggle up next to Kelly. Um, so we're going to just get started. And I wanted to first, um, talk to you a little bit about policies of yes and where, where that came from. Um, the title policies of yes comes from Sh the Shonda Rhimes book, Year of Yes, but also from her TED talk. Um, the very act of saying yes is not just life changing, it is life saving. We just loved that quote and we felt that it applied to what we do every day in the library. I really feel a lot of things when people walk in our doors, we never know what they're experiencing and how we might help them and that we might be the only positive interaction they have during the day. Move it forward. So we are, um, our introductions that we're gonna give you here shortly are more confessions than introductions. We wanted to tell you how this journey started for us and invite you to walk along with us a little bit. We are in the beginning of the journey. Um, moving along, but it's a never, it's, it really never ends our, this journey of ours. Um, so we're gonna keep going, but we're gonna do a little skit for you as well before we do our confessions. And it's gonna be a little bit weird because Kelly's gonna play two roles um, and <laughs> she's not gonna walk off and on the screen, but she, we're just gonna wing it. This was initially an in-person um, program. So this gets a lot more energetic when we're on a stage and throwing our arms around, but we'll do our best here. Absolutely. So first, we are going to have you kind of witness what uh, our interpretation of what an average library patron uh, exchange can look like in two different ways. So first, we'll try this first way. So. Hi, did you need to check out today? I did. Thank okay. you. What's your name? Uh, my name's Kelly. Great. Kelly, do you have your library card with you? Um, I don't, but my last name's uh, Fork and Brock. It's All right. Well, I can look that up for you this time. Um, oh, and it does look like you have a $10 fine that you're going to need to pay before you can check out today. Oh, okay. Um, I really don't have any chain. I don't have any money on me 
right now, if I could check out books right now and come back, um, would that be okay? Oh, no, sorry. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll just take these for you and you can come back when you have some money to pay back. Okay, thank you. Sure. Now we're gonna rewind. We're gonna do it one more time. Hi. Hi there, are you ready to check out? I am. Fantastic, I hope you find some good, found some good materials. Yeah. Um, do you have your library card? Uh, I do not. Is it okay if I use my last name? Absolutely, no worries at all. What's your last name? Fork and Brock. All right, and could you just verify your address for me really quick? Sure, it is 168 Main Street. Fantastic, okay. Oh, and it does look like you have a few fines today, but we actually don't charge fines anymore in our library. We got rid of um, fines, so oh, we're gonna okay. erase those from your account, start fresh today, and we'll thank get you. these checked out for you and ready to go. Awesome, thank you so very you much. Bet. You have a great day. Thank you. So from those two exchanges, it was the same, the same conversation, the same circumstances, uh, but as you can see, the approach was very different. Um, we here at North Liberty Library, in fact, did go fine free right before the pandemic closing in March of 2020. And we have these exchanges every day from folks who forget their library cards to folks who have uh, pending fines and working with them on those issues. Uh, but overall, as Jenny said at the top, uh, we try to work within a policy framework of yes, where uh, we use radical trust, and inclusive and inclusion uh, to make sure our patrons know that they are wanted here. All right, so we're going to start with our confessions um, and give you a little bit of the timeline here. Uh, talk about where we we came from and where we're going. Um, so how this session came about. Uh, so I'm going to confess to you that I always thought that libraries are just naturally inclusive. We just let everybody in. So. By doing that, we were just including everybody all the time. Um, not so. Uh, we, we found some ways that we were not being inclusive as we started to look at our policies and our procedures and our, how we delivered our services. Service delivery is super important. And what we discovered was that this is a really good time for us to make some good changes, um, especially when we had some closure time and then some re-entry time, some time for people to come back in. We thought now's the time uh, to make this new welcoming environment um, even more welcoming because our library's always been pretty friendly, but we wanted to make sure that we were not only friendly, but we, that we were providing equitable and inclusive services. Um, and then Emily, our, our cohort who's not with us today, uh, recently did, a, um, a, she's involved in a thing called Project Ready, which is a cohort out of Colorado. She's been very lucky to be involved in Colorado Libraries early liter for Early Literacy, which was originally started in North Carolina. Um, and her confession, was just that she didn't quite understand the um, difference between diversity and inclusion and where that, that brought her or brought us. So we wanna give you some definitions um, for how we're defining those terms today. There's lots of different ways they can be defined, but this is how we're applying them. So here's our benchmarks. Diversity is defined as a range of human differences. It's our race, ethnicity, gender, um, all the things that make us make up our our appearances um, and who we are, but also internally, what, what's on the inside for us. Um, equity is defined as fairness and justice in the way people are treated and how they are served. And inclusion is defined as creating a welcoming environment of belonging. So um, in addition, I still have more. You sure Apparently, do. this Sorry. is also Emily's. Um, so <laughs> her takeaway from her, her project ready is that diversity is only on the surface. Um, it's what we see and mainly in those things, sometimes the diversity is not visible, but it's, it's surface level. Inclusion and belonging um, go much deeper. They take a deeper dive in for things. Um, diversity is what you're looking at and what you have, that you're here and th there in the space. Inclusion is what you're looking to do what you do and that you're feeling valued. Diversity is being given a plate of food. Inclusion is getting to choose what goes on that plate and to take it a step further, belonging is getting to help create that menu. And that's where we want to be at that place. In practice, we focus our story time and them, I think I'm jumping ahead now. Am I jumping ahead? No, programming. All right, still going. Okay, so programming wise, sorry guys, we're, this is how we're winging Emily. Um, 
In representation in our story times displays and expanding beyond just token diversity, we're trying to make sure that our community members not only see themselves, but also see how other people might live and 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 are how they are experiencing life. Um, we work with community partners to reach underserved populations across the gamut. Um, our partners range broadly and they aren't just our typical library partners we reach far beyond just including like project ready in colorado she just reached out and said hey i know i'm from iowa can i be part of this and they said absolutely um, and then we find those bridge contacts they help us understand what programming and community needs are and then how we can um, take down those barriers what barriers are existing and how we might take those down because we have to admit that we don't always know those barriers we assume we do but we don't always um, in my role as a public services librarian, uh, one of the main things that I do is help uh, onboard, train, and uh, manage our part-time staff. And just like at most libraries, our part-time staff uh, are usually the main ones on our front lines. They are the folks at our reference desk, uh, and they are usually the first faces that our patrons see when they enter the library. Uh, in addition to the work that I do here, I'm also in grad school pursuing my master's in library and information and sciences here at the University of Iowa, which is about 15 minutes down the road from us. Uh, and one of the discussions that came up during my first year, this just this past year of my studies, uh, was the ability to train our library staff to converse with empathy. Uh, and that really hit home for me, uh, given the work that I do in my public services capacity. And I think that that's something that we need to consider when we're building our policies and procedures. We need to consider, is our staff adequ adequately trained uh, to have empathetic conversations with our patrons? Or is it transactional? Is it, you know, they come in, they check out materials and you send them on your way? What, where is that engagement coming in and how does that color what your policies and procedures look like? Uh, so we'll be touching on that a bit today as well. You know, what that empathetic conversation looks like with our patrons and how well we're preparing our library staff to have those conversations. All right, so here's some reflections. Um, Let's talk about our service population just a little bit so you get some background. We are in a community of 25, or about 22,000 actually now. It says 20K, but we just keep growing. So that's a guess guesstimate based on our last special census. Um, we also are, when I started at the library a long, long, long time ago, um, our population was about 4,500. So we've grown dramatically in the last 20, 20 some years. Um, tripled in size or more, well now quadrupled, um, since I moved to North Liberty, so it's just kind of crazy. And we've seen the, the population shift to a much more diverse population as well. Primarily, we, so we see a lot of families. Um, I like to joke that our community is uh, about 50% under the age of 10, and the rest of them are pregnant um, or grandparents coming in to take care of those kiddos. So we see retirees coming back to the community or um, moving here from other locations to take help take care of kids. We see a lot of local professionals because we are located next to three colleges um, in, in our neighboring communities. So while we're a small town na na nationwide, um, we are a Kind of a bigger library in, in Iowa. We're considered a medium-sized library in Iowa. Uh, so historically, we have um, had some pretty inconsistent policy, reactive policy, and it was pretty rigid. I came, became director in 2015, and one of the first things we did was really look at making those policies flexible, um, creating purpose statements for every policy, and being very consistent in how we delivered policies and, and used our policies. Um, and now we're doing this next step, which is filling the gap by adding a commitment to being inclusive and diverse and, belong, and, and sure belonging as we do our policies. 
um, when I started, we also created, as director, we also created this, a tagline that's experience your library. It was sort of a branding thing for us. We don't use it as much today, but I love what it says and what I, what we tell patrons or our staff when they start. And what I tell staff when I first meet them is that I want every patron who walks through our door to have the experience that they're seeking when they come in. Whatever it is, whether it's just finding a book and the next day they're back to get a different book, they're seeking a different experience every time they walk through our doors. We want to make sure that they have that experience, that that they leave feeling really cared for and that they belong here. And also that we don't know what baggage they're carrying when they walk in. And again, as I said earlier, we might be the only positive interaction they have in a day. So we wanna make sure that we are giving them that interaction. Um, so one of the first things we did was create an inclusion commitment. It is not by any means done. It, what you'll see is a draft. Um, and Kelly's going to pull it up just so I can show it to you here. This is what we came up with. And it says Jedi. We actually have switched that. Um, we liked the term Jedi because we thought it was kind of fun and, and quirky. Uh, however, the committee that we have on staff decided that they wanted it to be idea instead of Jedi. Um, and so it's now the same, same words, just mixed up, mixed around a little bit. Inclusion, diversity, equity, and access. Um, justice is implied there as well. So at the North Liberty Library, we commit to treating every person with dignity and respect. We strive to create a safe environment where inclusion and belonging are a natural part of our culture. These values are reflected in the policies and in our policies and in our service. So that's what we're working for. That's the, what we're looking to, to do. Um, and I wanna give you just an example of that as well while we're on this, that page. So we have our, our meeting room use policy here. Um, and I'm, not, I'm only gonna show you one piece of it. What I wanna show you is this bottom piece um, that we have had this note down here that's in pink, um, a non-discrimination statement. Now, when we started this, what we had was, if you're discriminating against any kind of group or any um, anybody, you're not welcome at our library. Basically, we said you can't you can't use our meeting rooms. Um, our attorney kind of frowned on that. He said we couldn't do that. <laughs> so the next thing we, we we took the next step, and he offered this wording for us, which is basically that use is not permitted by groups that practice and profess inclusion. This is what we had, um, what we wanted to do. Now we've changed it, and what it says, and I don't have the, the updated one to show you, but what it says is that we don't condone discrimination or discriminate against any person on the basis of race, religion, sex, sexual orientation, gender, identity, housing, status, ability, or ethnicity. Granting permission to use our meeting rooms does not constitute endorsement of any group or affiliated group's viewpoints. Iowa civil rights law forbids discrimination um, on the basis of, and then these words again, we want to just make sure that people know that we are non-discriminatory. We are not discriminating against anyone. So anyone who uses our rooms, just like you have at the end of your email, some people have, um, you know, my employer, my views may not be my employers, same thing here. The views of the library don't necessarily reflect the people that come in our doors. As, uh, as Jenny mentioned, the IDEA inclusion, inclusion statement uh, is really an acknowledgement of our own barriers, of the barriers that exist within our community. In addition to our IDEA uh, committee, we also have our neighborhood ambassadors who uh, work every day to reach out to our neighbors uh, as proxies to uh, look at those barriers. And part of having this kind of, uh, part of having this, let me go back. Yeah. So part of what we do with the IDEA policy is, you know, the acknowledgement of barriers and also recognizing our own ignorance uh, of the barriers and creating a commitment to reach out to communities to invite their belonging. So it's really twofold. It's the acknowledgement of barriers and then creating the culture of belonging for our uh, patrons. We always want to stress to them that, you know, you belong here. It is not our privilege at the library to welcome you. This is your place. It is, it is our 
honor to have our patrons, not our privilege to have our patrons come in and use uh, their library. And we have several uh, policy examples that we use. And I like to also make um, and also make a, a distinction between the difference between policy and procedures. Uh, policy is what we have in words. Those are the the policies that we we have our board look at, that we look at as staff uh, to make sure the words and the language are consistent with our mission. Uh, but the procedure is the action behind the words. It's how we enact the policy. So policy and procedure, sometimes they can become intermingled, but we here at North Liberty Library are careful to know the difference between the two terms, to understand that policy are words and know that is something that can be changed uh, throughout review uh, and throughout internal review. But the procedures, the actions, that is what the patron is going to remember. They're not going to remember the policy that's posted on your website. They're going to remember your actions and how you proceeded with that policy and whether or not you created an, uh, an environment of inclusion and belonging when you enacted the policy. So uh, one example of that uh, would be our uh, disruptive behavior flow chart. So here's our disruptive behaviors flow chart. Uh, this was created in part by a social work intern uh, that we had here a few summers ago, um, who was uh, very integral in working with our youth and uh, vulnerable adult population. And based on their observations of, of those populations, uh, they created uh, the Disruptive Behaviors Procedure Flowchart, which you see here today. Um, again, it's not focused on just children and vulnerable adults. This is applicable to any and all patrons that enter our doors of all ages and backgrounds. Uh, and we made a point at the top to describe what problematic behavior is. Because sometimes when we talk about behavior and disruption in the library, there are some gray areas. We were sure to create first to include some examples of what that would be, talking loudly, running, making messes, playing music or games too loud. And we use kind of a three strikes rule here with the, uh, um, with our behavior policy, with this disruptive behavior flowchart. But again, the, the action behind it and the language that we use is so important uh, to creating an environment of inclusion. So our first warning is very much just a calm approach saying, hey everyone, it sounds like you're having a lot of fun. What's going on? How, how's, you know, acting like you want to be included in it, you know, saying, you know, I know you're having fun, but if we could just keep our voices down, that would be really, really helpful. Thank you. Uh, the second staff intervention uh, is still another calm approach, but it does repeat what was said in the first intervention. Hey guys, your noise level is a little too high, and I know we agreed to lower the volume, but I, and I want you to stay and have fun, but we also want other patrons to enjoy the library too. So um, in order to let you stay here, I, I'm asking again if we can just keep our voices quieter. Thank you. Uh, when we get into the third uh, intervention, that is uh, when, again, with a calm approach, we then ask, uh, the patron to leave for the day. And we make it clear that it's for the day, that it's not punitive for a long amount of time, it's for the day. And we do a staff follow-up, this last box, which is, I think is my favorite part of this behavior flowchart. Because at this point we're saying, you know, when they come back in the next day, it's not a confrontation, it's very much a welcome. Hey, I'm glad you're back, how are you today? Um, you know, yesterday, you know, I was sorry that you were asked to leave. Just a reminder that we want you to keep your voice a little lower today, okay? Uh, this helps to reestablish a connection and you can continue to build a relationship with the patron while gently reminding them of the expectation. So again, this is empathy at work. This is a policy being used in an empathetic manner that uh, thrives with inclusion and belonging. So we, we, we work to make all of our policies very much like this disruptive behavior flowchart.
All right. We'll go back. So I, I just want to add in there just a, a good example is just this week. Um, we had on Monday I, when I worked the desk, I, I try to get out there a couple hours a week. And on Monday when I was at the desk, the kids were just vibrating with energy. You could just see it. And I think it's just the start of summer. There was a group just here almost all day. We have snack at four. They were waiting on snack. Um, just so many things happening. There were balloons that they pulled off a shelf that were there for a display and they were trying to pop them and it just kept going and I'm like I know this day is just going to be rough on them today it's going to be hard um so I you know I did a couple of hey guys we need to redirect um and I was busy and it was hard to do um when they when they started popping balloons and running through the stacks I walked over and said I feel like you guys are wanting to leave for the day and they were like no 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 and I said well your behavior is not showing me that your behavior is telling me something different so i need to have you redirect your behavior i need to get you back to where you were and calmer a little calmer in the library otherwise sometimes i'll even send them out to run around the building a couple times i'm like take two laps come back when you can calm down a little bit this is not library um behavior we have a rec center next door in our in our building we are sh we share a building with a rec center so the kids will come over here pretty rambunctious and we try to have them go back and forth um so in our child conduct and um child safety policy, which we don't have, we're not gonna show you right now just for time, but it is included in the um, link that we'll give you to our drive that has all of these files and things in them. Um, it basically says that any kiddo can come in the library and stay as long as they can conduct themselves according to our uh, conduct policy or conduct code on a regular basis. Um, if a kiddo comes in and they're five, they can stay if they can behave well, um, if they're, nine and they, they can stay if they behave well if they're 15 whatever age or adults same thing mm -hmm. um but it's really about conduct it's not about age for us on the library side on the rec side they do things a little differently so there is some struggles sometimes um we just keep reminding the rec staff this is a behavior issue not an age issue and if they have if it's a 10 year old who's been asked to not go in the rec center then they have to stay on the library side or they have to leave for the day because of their conduct um, and that's something we try to reiterate over and over. It's all about conduct and we follow on that policy, um, probably the most of all of our policies. If they're younger, like a four-year-old, we will just sometimes send a little letter with whoever's with them. Maybe it's a 10-year-old so sibling or whatever, um, letting them know that they need to come back in six months and try again um, to see if we can make it work later on. But they don't, if it's taking so much staff time to intervene, then we, we know we need to try again later. Um, yes, she's going to move on to the next little part of this, which is our windows, our inclusion and belonging in action. Um, I loved this little uh, pink thing, or pink uh, sticky note that we have on there that talks about diversity. Um, this is where we got that. It, you're at the table, you're, you're, you know, you're having that voice and then you're being part of creating the menu. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about three things. The first one is our fine free. It's, it's not in order here. We, we don't. It's all there. Um, I should tell you, I didn't tell you at the beginning, my my default thing that I always say when I present is that slides are really something for you to look at so you don't have to just constantly look at me. We typically do under 10 slides um, and then what, try to give you the content we want in our words. And then at the end, we'll provide, like I said, those files for you. So our fine free policy was one of the first things we did to try to be more inclusive. We knew that some folks can't pay their fines, they can't afford it. And our, our goal is for people to be able to check out and use our services. Um, so we moved away from that, but we also have um, situations where people may have five or 10 items that they just don't return. And then we are in a different situation. We do need to charge for those materials, but we work out what we call an account reconciliation. That means that if they have say $100 in, in overdue materials that they don't, they've lost them or whatever, we work with them on a, an agreement. Um, of what they think they can afford to pay. It's not what we dictate, but how much do you think you can do a month? And if it's $2, that's fine. We'll, we'll go with $2 as long as they give the $2 and they continue. They can continue to use all the services just as they would. If they can't do that, they can come in and just say, hey, this month isn't gonna work for me. And that's okay too. It's all about follow through and accountability for us. So as long as they're willing to be accountable for um, eventually paying those off, we're okay. Um, and if it, comes down to it, we'll look at whether it's really that big of a deal um, to let those go. Sometimes it's just the cost of doing business. We want to make sure that we're meeting people where they are, um, and that's really important to us. 
So the last thing I want to talk about is our strategic planning. We just came up with our new strategic plan and I'm really, really proud of it. But before I do that, I want to read this statement. It's from our um, annual report of 2020 and it's, I just, I, it's my statement. Um, I still love it. So I'm just going to share it with you guys. We thrive to be inclusive and equitable. The North Liberty Library values and is committed to serving all members of our community in quiet and in uncertain times. Libraries have long been places to empower people through knowledge and to do so equit equitably. So as our FY21 story unfolds and we continue to recreate and reinvent how we serve you, our mission holds true. Your library, a place to be, connect, enrich, create, thrive. And Kelly is going to pull up our strategic plan for you really quickly. I am just going to very quickly um, show you a little bit of what we've done with our strategic plan. Um, and, and we're going down. She's going to scroll. Yeah, right. Uh, so we kind of talk about the process first. And then I just want to talk about our defining principles. We chose to call them defining principles rather than um, what it was the other term we could have used. I think it was... Uh, I can't remember. Anyway, okay. so defining principles are access, diversity, and service. These are things that overarch all that we do. Um, and I won't read everything to you, but I did want to then show you the values that this team chose, our staff team, uh, along with a, a board member who came in and worked with us um, during our process and our state library consultant who helped us develop this. Um, so we chose to do almost all of our things, our three values, are things that are overarching exactly what we're talking about today, that piece of belonging. So Civic Commons um, is the first one, just where people come and meet and interact. And Kelly has a great example of that in a program that she's doing that's been a long, long dream of mine, uh, which is a series of heart conversations or community conversations. Um, she started that during COVID, so the first one was completely virtual. Um, we've now been able to move back to those, and she can talk a little bit more about that, I think, later on. But knowing that we're investing in our community assets and creating places for people to connect of all different ages and all different backgrounds. Um, social responsibility, ensuring that the library, I, I fully believe that libraries have an, a, a um, role in social responsibility and, and delivering efforts to support and inform people about critical issues. Um, it's very important in our library that we do that and our, our fortunately our city is on board for that. They support the things that we do. Our uh, city council and our city administrator have been extremely supportive. And then literacy. And literacy doesn't just mean learning how to read. Um, literacy is all the things for all ages. It's that lifelong learning component, providing free and equal access to everyone in our community and upholding those First Amendment expressions. Um, so that's basically our strategic plan in a nutshell. Um, that is also included in our in the thing she'll, the folder that we'll share with you after the fact. Um, and Kelly, if you want to pull back up the slides. Mm -hmm. And the last thing is, I just wanted to tell you a little bit more. The, the strategic plan is just that deeper dive into meeting people where they are. But I did want to talk to you a little bit about the idea committee. Kelly is a are you a member? I am. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know who my members are um, of the idea committee. So we have 19 staff, and I think we have six on that committee. Plus, our um, a new city role we have for our city is. Um, a program and equity coordinator. And Micah is also, Micah is her name. She's also on that committee. Um, but what they do is showcase our, our commitment to this offering these inclusive services, working to ensure that we embed inclusion in every aspect of what we do in our operations and service delivery. Um, both Kelly and Emily are part of that committee and Kelly is gonna tell you just a little bit more about how they've started and where they are today. Yep. Uh, Absolutely. So we have been uh, making it a point to meet uh, as often as possible. We're, we're meeting once to twice a month. Uh, we created the statement that uh, we reviewed earlier in the PowerPoint, uh, in the uh, slide deck. And uh, we're still striving to create uh, ways to uh, reach out to neighbors and get their thoughts on how we can better uh, serve our patrons uh, in the name of diversity, uh, inclusion, and access. Uh, so we're still working on that as a work in progress. Um, 
And a lot of what we do when we come up with our programming really is based on uh, an intersection between partnerships and policy. As Jenny mentioned before, we do have a conversation series. It's called Lighthouse in the Library. It is partially funded by a grant we received from the American Library Association in uh, 2020. Uh, and since then, we've had four conversations ranging from food and wellness inequity to uh, workforce issues. Our last conversation, our last event was 100% in person. It was just this past month. And it was done in partnership with the University of Iowa and their Cultural Competence Center, where we talked about cultural intelligence and it was a very interactive program. It was two hours and it went by so fast. Um, but uh, yeah, we really do strive to um, adopt a programming policy that is very inclusive, that includes inclusive partnerships. Uh, some of those partnerships that we have include the United Action for Youth. Uh, UAY is an organization here uh, in uh, Johnson County that has uh, helped us with training specifically when it comes to our youth and teen populations, uh, but they've also provided staff training for our library staff. And that's been very, very helpful. Uh, also, another partnership that we use uh, to help uh, uh, strive to, that we help to uh, navigate our policy is our work with social work interns. Uh, we, uh, as I mentioned before, the, the, uh, the disruptive behavior flow chart that uh, we looked at earlier was created in part through the work of an intern uh, that was here from the university. Uh, they also have assisted with our diversity audits. I think we've completed diversity audits for all of our juvenile, all of our juvenile materials. And I think we're getting started with the adult materials now. And these audits again began in 2020 during our closing. It was one of our, our uh, pandemic projects, if, as it were. Um, uh, that again, that action where we're literally taking every single book off of the shelves, giving them a review and determining based on a set of criteria, whether the material uh, aligns with our goals to be inclusive and to encourage belonging with our patrons. Um, and then uh, again, as I mentioned with the idea committee, you know, they help uh, uh, determine our stance on uh, library neutrality. And as you can see, the small little cartoon on the screen, um, we consider books to not only be windows to different worlds, but also mirrors of our patrons. And the best way to make sure that books are indeed mirrors of our patrons is to make sure that we're doing our diversity audits and that our collection is inclusive and diverse. Oh, yes. And then um, also, you know, we also when it comes to, uh, you know, when it comes to library neutrality, as Jenny mentioned earlier, we support an exclusive statement that is listed in our meeting room policy. Well, we already showed that, that and that will be in the meeting room policy will be included in the uh, link of documents Jenny mentioned before. Uh, but we firmly believe that not all opinions matter. When those opinions discriminate against another group, we do not give them value. Uh, in the past, libraries have had to track record, have had to track records of supporting discrimination, have had a track record of supporting discrimination, whether it was actively as under Jim Crow or passively uh, by staying silent on current issues. Uh, but here at North Liberty Library, we strive to do better. Uh, we are not going to give space to discriminatory groups because we want everyone to feel safe in this space. Uh, this goes back to what we, one of our values of creating civic commons, to create a space where everyone feels welcome. And I will say the diversity audits are something we probably never could have accomplished without our, without the help of all of our part-timers, mm -hmm. um, but also without um, without the pandemic. So some good things have come out of that. Uh, there's no way we could have handled every book like we did in our collection. It's over 60,000 pieces of material. Um, we haven't touched the adult stuff yet, but all the kids stuff is done. Um, and, and we get monthly reports as they're continuing that as they reorder new 
um, items for the collection, that work continues. Um, I did want to talk just a little bit about policies and why we have policies. It's, this is a little out of order, um, but I wanted to just bring it up because I think it's really important. Our policies protect not only our public, but they protect our staff. So we use those policies when we do our work every single day, but they're also extraordinarily flexible. We want the, the decision-making power to be in the hands of every staff member from our part-timers who work four to eight hours a week um, to our full-timers. It's the primary tool that they can use to do their job effectively, and it offers the public a set of expectations for the library and ensures that everyone is treated, treated with equity. Um, and it also is great customer service. If you have good policy and solid policy, you're going to deliver better customer service if your staff is consistent with it. We do a lot of public education with our policy if we need to. If we need to use it to like explain why we allow kids a little bit of leeway when they're here, we know that um, poverty is loud and we want to acknowledge that for some patrons who may not always get that we're kind of a noisy library. Um, we're here to here to allow everyone's space to do what they need to do. Um, you know, we'll put a kibosh on really loud noise, but we've learned from United Action for Youth that some kids are just, they grow up in an atmosphere that's very loud. They're vying for attention, and sometimes their voices are just noisy. Um, so we try to make sure that we do that. We also want to um, use policy to cover any legal or ethical issues and um, to lend credibility to what the work we do every day. Uh, some of it's because of our state library standards. We have policy in place um, just simply that, that there that's some implications there. It's a mechanism for our administration and our staff to, to translate those library priorities and our strategic plan into action. Um, and then finally, it's a way to support the staff and the board if ever there's any event of legal action. We think that policies need to be proactive. So as I mentioned, we started rewriting every single policy we had when I started as director. We got rid of some policies. We really pared them down. Our policy manual is like 30 some pages altogether, and it's based on our operations and services. Um, and it's very community specific. We need to remember that policies Fit in, fit in a little bit with your community. Not every policy is going to work for every community. Our child safety policy might not work in another in another area. If you've got kiddos being dropped off who just can't take care of themselves or can't um, if require constant intervention, it's not going to work for you. Um, and then they're just there to say, I see you and I hear you. And they're in the fabric of everything we do at our library. So our idea committee reviews every policy we have every month and provides input in ways that we can make the policies more equitable and inclusive as well. So that work has just begun. We're not anywhere near, this is just the start, as I mentioned, the start of our journey and it's, an, it's never done, that work is never done. And I just finally wanted to just read you a quote that I found when we were researching this, and that is authenticity creates a path for everyone and a direction. If you just slap together buzzwords, there may not be anything to anchor it into um, or connect it with as possible. You embody your commitment to diversity in your culture rather than in just being a statement. Leverage your time, energy, and resources to create results. So we are at the end. I feel like a talking head. We've been talking at this <laughs> screen for a long time and we can't see any of you. Um, I, we have a little time left, so if anyone has questions, if you don't, we can show you more things. Thank you. Thank you. If anyone has questions and wants to type it in the chat. Or, Comments, uh, questions. I don't see anything yet, but you can go ahead and put that in there if they want to show us some more information. This is fascinating and I, I, am, I really admire your, the efforts that you put in to do this is, like you said. I'm going to bounce and, down just to show, I'll just kind of give you a little more. We wanted you to know who we are and what our families look like because for us, this isn't just library work. It's also personal work. We're, we're members of our communities. We have families um, who use our resources as well and use other libraries. And it's important for us that libraries are operating this way because we want our families to all feel welcome in the library, just as we want our patrons to feel welcome. Um, so this is our information. It's where you can contact us if you want to talk more, if you have questions, if you want to know why this is important for any community, um, we're happy to talk about those things. 
with you. Um, and then just kind of, these are a few of the resources that we used as we were creating this. Again, these are all linked, so you'll get the, a copy of the PowerPoint. It's in, it'll be in the resources that we provide. Um, and I think uh, maybe it's not, but I will make sure to give send you guys the um, a copy of the or the drive folder so that everyone has access to, to all the things that we've been talking about today. Um, I think we'll have a couple things we need to update before we do that, and I'll make sure that's done because we first did this presentation a year and a half ago. Yeah. So the work is still going, but this is just some of the things that we use to get where we are. Um, and really, I, I think I can show, we can show you our, um, what, what did we have? We had one more, I think, thing that we might have been wanting to show off. And if we don't, we might be able to just be, let you go a few minutes early. Um, we already did. Oh, maybe we did them all. Let's see if there's anything else that you might be interested in seeing. Well, I can show you the account reconciliation agreement um, that we use with our patrons. Does that count? Hopefully that comes up for you guys. Um, yes. So this is just a, a basic example of what it looks like when they come in. It's an agreement, not a contract. We know that they may not pay it. And if they don't, then we work with them. Um, you know, we do things like, okay, maybe uh, it's been hard for you to bring back 20 pieces of material, so maybe let's try three instead. Um, and when you bring those back, you can get three more. We just want access for our patrons, whatever that means for them, and however we can make that, that a thing. Um, so we, we, and Kelly's wordsmith and reworked a lot of our, these types of documents that we use and to deliver our services. And she trains every staff person on all of these things. She's created a great training platform since she started here. Um, so Kelly's, is it, how long have you been here now? Uh, it's been three years. Three years. Yes. Yeah. Just so, this yeah. past, uh, this, I think this is my coming up on my third year here in June. Awesome. We are happy she is here. I am happy um, to be here. Yes. We so do have the last. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, Finish. you go ahead. I was just going to keep talking. That's fine. Jenny, you said that when you became director, then you started instituting these changes. And so I just was curious about did, did have the ideas been in your head for a while and then you became director or did you? pick up things from somewhere else. What what was your drive to make this change? That's so, you know, I um when I started as director, I had been I've been at the library for 25 years and I've been director for seven of that. Um, before that I was assistant director and before that I was teen librarian and before that I was a library assistant. So I've been in lots of roles here. Um, I have worked, I like to say I've worked in three libraries and they've all been North Liberty. Um, we started in a very tiny 1200 square foot space I would live next door to the library and I decided to volunteer um, so that was the start I went over to get a book and my the former director said well if you want it's not ready yet but if you want to go downstairs and process it I'll catalog it for you um, so that was the beginning of my shift um, I had always thought libraries were interesting and in fact um, had my former boss I was going to be a reporter um, my former boss uh, at the Des Moines Register actually his wife was a librarian and I was like, wow, that sounds like something I'd really like. And it just didn't click. Um, so that was the click for me. And then um, when I started as director, the diversity and equity pieces were, as I mentioned earlier, kind of to me, I just thought we were inclusive by nature. Um, so I didn't do any of that major, I did the major work just to re make policies flexible. I'm, I'm a weirdo who just loves policy um, and I love finding out about policy and creating policy. I, I'd share my policies sometimes with our uh, city attorney, like the meeting room policy, but I don't always share them with him because I don't want to know <laughs> about them. And he likes to make things more complicated than they need to be, and he will admit that, first of all. Um, but the diversity and the equity and the inclusion pieces really, for us, I think hit home in 2020 um, when, when things started spinning out of control in our country. And um, for us, it was the discovery that libraries, yes, they do have a place in social responsibility. We have an, we have a role to take. And, and so then I started thinking about, uh, I did a podcast um, and I, for what I was interviewed for a podcast and I started thinking about libraries as, um, I just lost my train of thought. What's the word I want? Yes, civic spaces. No, library. So when, Oh my gosh, you guys, this is terrible. Um, it's usually an individual who is a 
um, during George Floyd, what, what, when we support the different uh, groups, and we're not part of the group, but we support the group. Oh, allies. Thank you. As allies. My gosh, my brain is, <laughs> what is it, Wednesday? I don't know. I can't use Monday as an excuse. Um, so as allies, libraries as allies. And I started researching it. And, and maybe it's somewhere that organizations can be allies, but I can't find it. In my research, I didn't find it. But I thought, what better allies than libraries um, to groups in our communities? It, it always referred to individuals as allies, not not libraries but i truly believe we have a role as allies to the groups that are disenfranchised and underserved so that really started our journey journey and then when we started talking about this actual the session that we um first just spontaneously submitted for the association for rural and small libraries and then it just kind of spun into what we have today um, we presented this at arsl in reno and we've presented it like four more times since then yeah. and excited, very excited news. Um, I was actually, someone heard my podcast that I did with um, a leadership podcast um, and I was invited to speak in Australia in October. So I get to go speak to the Australia Public Libraries um, this fall, so that's pretty cool. So you get to travel to Australia? I do, they're flying me there. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much for that explanation and um, I really, appreciate the things that you're talking about uh, as far as allies i have to agree with you that libraries can be allies but i don't know i'm not a good semantics person either so um if they say it just has to be people then it has to be the librarians i guess but um oh i'm gonna change that <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> that sounds good to me um did you have anything else you want to say we don't have any other questions so we have some thank yous so people who awesome. are listening Again, right feel now. free to reach yeah feel free to reach out i love talking to other librarians about this stuff and i'm passionate about it so email call whatever you want to do it's all it'll all be and i'll send um you guys the link to the drive that you can share with everyone who attended thank you so much and we'll put that on the um web page along with the archive of this presentation for people to look at and then they'll be able to access all of that right there from our web page. So right. thank you, thank you for um, your presentation. And I, I didn't miss the third person at all. Don't tell her that. I'm sure she's <laughs> wonderful and she works very hard, but you guys did a great job picking up the, the slack for her. Um, well, so thank she, you. And thank you uh, thanks, for Sarah. having us. And thank you for everyone who's in attendance. Yes. <laughs> and I'll, I just want to say that um, we do have a, a place on the Nebraska Library Commission webpage. I don't know if I have to take back control or something in order to. Um, I have to. Yeah. Have to see. We'll stop showing our screen. Okay. Let's see. I don't there know what screen I'm showing anymore. <laughs> I'll take a quick look and see what. Okay. Yes. So here's um, on our overall Nebraska Library Commission page. Over here, you can search Encompass Live, and this is what will come up: um, is the list of upcoming presentations here, uh, including the one that's just completing right now. And then down below that is the archived Encompass Live shows, so you can look and see. Well, last week it was um, the Heartland Honors 9/11 Victims and Survivors. So if there's something you want to watch from this lists all of our shows from the very beginning uh, which was don't look it will make you sick january 7 <laughs> 2009 that was our very first one and we have been consistently presenting these from very thoughtful helpful people from all over the the country and also some of our staff here at the library commission so it all depends on what it is and one thing krista always tells people is now you look here these are presentations from 2009 things have changed since 2009 so whatever um links they may have or things that they send you to might not exist anymore or might be different so you have to keep that in mind as you're looking okay don't look at the screen for a minute because here we go back right back up again so you can <laughs> 
search everything or you can just say show me the most recent 12 months what's in the last 12 months there's probably something of interest to me in there too so um, then you don't have quite the the time frame issue and also the long list of of topics as well so you can uh, switch to either one and i um, just wanted to once again thank our presenters jenny and <gasps> kelly so i almost forgot thank you again and um thank you everybody who's listening today have a great day everyone have a great day everyone thank you and we'll be i have to find my button that's sharing thank you all and have a great rest of wednesday bye bye <laughs>